Hey everyone, this is Lutz and today I'm going to show you how you can figure the Raspberry Pi Zero without having a display or a keyboard connected. So, let's go! So, the first thing we need to do is download the software for the Raspberry. So, for this you go to raspberrypi.com slash software, scroll down and hit the button for download. Then you will be asked if you want to save it, you say yes. After a few seconds it's downloaded and then you just say yes I want to install it and install it to your computer. Then you say run Raspberry Pi Imager and you choose your operational system I would recommend you to use Raspberry Pi OS, but if you want to use the other operation system, you're free in your choice. But for a beginner, it's the easiest way to use this one. Then you choose your SD card and say, right, and you want to erase everything, yes, for sure. So this will take now a while. I'll make a cut here and we see us when it's finished with writing. So now we are back. When everything is finished, the system wants you to remove the SD card. We have to do it now, but we plug it directly in again because we need to make some small changes that we are able to connect to the Raspberry Pi directly without using a display or a mouse. So we just go to the SD card. Now no, I don't want to format the SD card. Now the first thing we need to do is add the new file which is just empty and only has the name SSH. Yes, we want to create it. The reason why we do this is that the Raspberry Pi now allows us to connect over SSH directly to the Raspberry Pi. But there's still one thing open. If the Raspberry Pi is booting now, it does not know to connect to which wireless LAN. So we need to create a file which tells the Raspberry Pi which wireless LAN to use and what the password is for. There's a standard file, it's looking like this. You just need to change the country code depending to your country code. And then you have to place here uh, the SSID of your wireless LAN and for sure the password you need to change. Then you just save this file directly into the boot folder of your Raspberry Pi. I've created the file and I put it in the main directory of the SD card. I will put you also a sample into the description of the video how this file looks like. So now we can remove the card from the SD drive and put it into the Raspberry Pi and start the Raspberry. So as an indicator if the Raspberry Pi is ready with booting you can use this LED which is placed here on the Raspberry. So if it stops blinking you can probably try to find it on the network. There are different types where you can do we will try at first this one what is most recommended. This is just the idea to ping for the Raspberry, but in my case normally it does not work. But it's not working. Now the next thing I would try is to find it with the ARP table. Sometimes it works. So now you have a bunch of numbers. We are looking for a special MAC address. In this case it's also not listed. So we try the third way. This is the one which is probably most working. But for this you need to be connected to your router. And your router explains you which devices are connected to. And now you find here the 235. This is my Raspberry. And if you're lucky before, here's the MAC address of a Raspberry Pi. So if you find a MAC address which is starting with E45F, you'll be lucky if this is the one you're searching for. 
So now we connect with Putty to the IP address we have. When you connect the first time to the Raspberry Pi, you get an information that there's a security issue. You can say yes, everything is okay, and you can connect to it. So uh, when you want to connect the first time, you have to write the username. This is just Pi, and the password is Raspberry. And the easiest way to make a secure system would now be that you just type in sudo password and give it a new password. This is at least the minimum I would recommend you to do. I would hardly recommend you just not only to change the password, just directly make a new user for your Raspberry Pi. Then you're much more safe if try someone tries to hack your computer or your Raspberry Pi. It's the easiest way just to use a Pi as a username. And if it's deleted, it's much more complicated to hack your Raspberry. So I quickly show you how this works. At first, we need to make a new user. sudo user add. And I just type it with my name. Oh, I forgot something. I need to make a home directory too. So that's the reason why I have to place this amp before. Then it's starting, then we need a password for it. Oh, I make a same mistake again with the wrong keyboard. I want that it's called with my real name. So then we need to change the password for it. And I don't have the permission for sure. We need to add sudo again. And it's important to use lower caps. So now we have a new user with a new password. What we need to do now is add the user to all of the admin groups or to all of the permission groups of the Raspberry system. This is a bit complicated command. So you can try it step to by step to grow it. I just show you how it works. At first we go to groups. And there you see what kind of groups I'm in as Raspberry Pi. So I quickly needed to change my keyboard. So now I'm within that one I'm used to know. So what we are doing now is cut the pie out of it. So if you try it step by step, you see what's changing now. I have cut the pie user group out of it. And then I want to change that we don't have this space in between. I want to have a comma instead of. So what we're doing now is cutting out this space and change it. And then it's getting a bit more complicated. We are putting this into an argument and do the user modulation and change the group. And then we are using the name of the here we go. So now when I type groups alerts, I see I have the same groups like the Raspberry has instead of the Pi group or the Lutz group, the rest is the same. So now I can change the 
auto start mode where the Raspberry Pi gets locked to or locked into. Here we go to the system, then we go to the boot, and here we can change the user. I would recommend to don't use the auto lock in and just to use any user. So if this is done, you just need to finish it. Then you need to reboot the system. And then it says it's not connected anymore because we are rebooting. Now we wait a few seconds. We need to connect again. After you have rebooted the system, you can directly connect with your new username and your new password. If you don't make a typo, you can directly connect to it. So now after the booting, it still says that SSH is enabled and the Raspberry Pi has still the standard user configuration. So we want to now delete the user. So we sell sudo del user remove the home directory of the user Pi. And then it gets asked for the password again for the super user. And now it's deleted and everything is done. So I think this is a really cool way to make the Raspberry Pi secure. And that's almost everything you need to do at first. The system is now safe. You can do whatever you want to. If you need some impressions for next project, I will link you here some other stuff I've done. And see you next time. Goodbye.